wonderful men who have an unbelievable relationship with the earth, with food, and they're here to share their experiences with you. Chris Eddy. And Chris is the executive chef over at Winvian in Morris, Connecticut. And he is someone who is very insistent, is very insistent on using the freshest seasonal ingredients for the food that he produces for the guests that come to Winvian. He prides himself on being a culinary craftsman, creating spontaneous farm-to-table food menus using simple, crisp, and fresh foods accented with unusual and foraged findings. Chris Wilk, Shamu Sadek. Shamu is the director of Adama, which is a farm in Falls Village, Connecticut. He is the co-founder of that farm and has been program director since 2004. He's led the growth of Adama into the most productive Jewish educational farm in the country with a transformative fellowship program that has produced dozens of leaders in the Jewish farming, environmental education, and in uh, food movements. <laughs> with his ancestral connections for Adama, he has this connection going back to his great-grandparents, back to his father, who were Jewish farmers and gardeners, who practiced the mystical arts of composting and soil conservation. The mystical arts. Would have never thought of that as a mystical art, but we have it with experience. And in 2010, the New York Jewish Weekly called Forward named Shabu one of the Forward 50 who made significant contributions to Jewish life in America. Welcome, Shabu. Next to Shabu is John Morasani. John, our neighbor right here in, in Litchfield. He lives on Laurel Ridge Farm, which is his family's farm, right down on Wigwam Road. He grew up in uh, Litchfield. He went to Middlebury College in Vermont and received an MBA from the Tuck School at Dartmouth College. Before having the inspiration to become a farmer, following in the footsteps of his father, he worked on Wall Street from 1977 to 2007. And it was in 2003 that he started raising cows in his spare time on weekends. And now, as of 2007, it became his full-time occupation. So, welcome John. We have Patrick Horan from Waldingfield Farm in Washington, Connecticut. Patrick has been working at the farm full-time since 2006. Prior to that, he was a part-time farmer. He worked in finance in New York City. He also was um, looking into a possible acting career at that time. Never can tell. <laughs> they come back. And right now he is responsible for marketing, sales, and operations, as well as the day-to-day -day farming duties that he has on the farm. Patrick, good to have you with us. How have you been changed? How have you been changed by your contact with the animal life? How have you been changed you know, by your contact with the earth and to see you know, life coming from the earth? How, is, how have you been changed? This year, we actually took our operation to the next level and we started um, raising animals. And I was kind of a step that I, I had always been a little bit uh, apprehensive about just because, you know, this is the, the real deal now because you're raising these animals and uh, you're going to be eating them. And um, it was kind of it was definitely the, the connection was a lot easier when you're when you're growing plants and beautiful flowers and things like that. That was really um, kind of effortless. But now moving into this, that that really kind of uh, well, it, it, it took everything to a whole new level. The the seriousness of all of this and the privilege that we all have uh, to be able to eat and what we eat and to actually have pure, good, decent food. Um, it's been, it's just been, it's been remarkable the whole process when you actually, you know, like well, I, I, we say farm to table, but really, I, you know, at this point, in many respects, we're seed to table. And I think just in general, from where we're coming from as cooks, the education that, never mind me, but that everybody in our staff gets 
is the, the, the full circle. Like exactly what you know, Bill Gleason um, says over and over and over, the full, the full circle. And they really get to see the whole process. And I tell you, it's, um, it just kind of elevates your, your consciousness when you're working with everything that you've grown, you're pulling stuff in, you, you've got the roots, you've got the nodules of the nitrogen still on the pea plants, you're smelling the dirt, you've got the insects, you've got the flowers, the, it's just, you can't, it's, um, it's, a, it's a whole new uh, existence, really. It's, it's really, it's an amazing connection. My back is stronger, I work a lot harder. <laughs> I take the Sabbath, uh, which for me is today, uh, a lot more seriously, uh, because the rest of the week is, is more consistently busy with, with transforming the land. Um, and, and yeah, and it's, it's definitely humbling. I think, the, you know, we have goats, small organic goat dairy, and, uh, you know, goats get out, they're about to get into the veggies or the you know, raspberries or blueberries or whatever, You're chasing a goat around. It's, it's very humbling. The <laughs> sense of control <laughs> over a situation collapses very quickly and you realize that you're, you know, there's a lot to figure out, a lot of things break all the time. It's, it's fundamentally humbling. I, I think as a, someone who was schooled in kind of old school environmentalism, I was a vegetarian before I started farming. I'm not anymore. I, I eat a lot less dairy than I did. I didn't understand the connections between dairy and meat. I didn't produce my own food in those days, so the questions were different. It's um, when we started on our, one of our new pieces of land, there was a line, maybe 10, 40 to 80 year old pine trees that were shading. We have very little land. We're limited on land and our, our richest field has had really increased damaging flooding, global climate change in the last, you know, in the last 10 years, and even more in the last three. So we're moving out of that field, so we're short on land. I've got these 10 pine trees that when we first got this piece of land, I said, I don't want to cut these trees down. I don't cut trees, it's not the business. I mean, I'm not trying to remove, you know, trees, mature vegetation from the planet, right? Um, since then, I've cut those trees down. They were milled. They were milled into lumber, but it means that we have a whole, you know, half an acre of or more of, of, of land that gets sun and we can produce food on. So those kinds of questions are humbling and, and complex when you're in, in, when you're in that interdependent relationship. I think the biggest change that, that I went through was just uh, education and having to learn. I mean, I just thought. You put the cow out there, you give them water, and you come back and harvest it a couple of years later. I didn't realize you had to go find the place to harvest it, and you had to find it. And then you go into the butcher shop, and they say, well, how would you like this cut up? And you go, you know, cut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, what cuts would you like? And then you get the cuts back. I think we have 21 separate cuts or something like that. And you go to the farmer's market, and somebody says, well, what do I do with an eye of round? Um, uh, so it was just a, a, a tremendous learning process that goes on there, and the, and the whole thing. I, mean, I, I was very lucky to have been, uh, at one point, uh, a, a failed med school applicant. I say that because you had to take a lot of science courses, and I always thought of farmers as the not-so-smart kids in class that went, to the <laughs> and went down there. You've got to know a lot about science. You've got to know a lot about chemistry, biology, to figure out what's going on. Or you go to the you know, the ag store and you take somebody else's word for what you're supposed to be doing, which can have its consequences. They're not necessarily mm -hmm. good. So it's it's uh, I thought I was gonna have to learn about that much and it was more like a mile wide. Mm -hmm. Well I I think that you've touched on actually the right word. I think I've there about there are three things that I've learned in, in twenty five years of being a part of Walding Field is the first one is that I really don't know what, what I'm doing. Each day I wake up and I think, God, I have no idea how we're going to get through this day. And then you do, because your muscle memory, your learned experiences, all these things which you've been building throughout the years, like in any craft, it helps you. 
it sustains you through the day. And at the end of the day, you think, God, all right, I'm okay, I can do this. So I've learned to be very uh, patient with the practice of farming. It's craft, it takes time to learn, it's an open kind of, it's an open university, for lack of a better term. Each day you're just learning new things and you're getting, you're improving yourself. But I've also learned, and I think this has come from, people look at my brothers and they say, you haven't been doing this for 25 years, you don't even look like you're that much past 30. <laughs> but I've learned to not be so dismissive of the culture's ignorance about agriculture. Most of our communities know nothing about it, and yet we eat every day. And I used to get really annoyed and angry, like, well, come on, man, get with it, you're killing the earth, all these kind of youthful ideas. And now I, I've learned that agriculture, if you take the second part of that word, it's a cultural reflection of who we are. And I've, Waldingfield's, one of our missions is to bring forth to our community and to my CSA members and the farmers markets that we go to a sense of purpose of why we do things and we think that it translates through good quality food and we think we're, we're constantly educating and you don't want to bash your client uh, with, with, with too much and so I've learned to to accept the fact that a great deal of the rest, the 30 years more, I'm going to hopefully, 40 years more, I'm going to farm, and I'm constantly going to be teaching my consumer about why we're doing this, why it's important you, you have dandelion greens. I mean, just to kind of parenthetically, in the early 70s, we grew up in front of Riverside Park, and I used to see these old guys with boots cutting weeds out of the hillside. I think, oh, these crazy people. They were these old Italian guys who were just there in the spring getting dandelion greens and wild arugula and all that. It never made, you know, and now I do it all spring, just like Bill. It's delicious, right? But um, we have a long way to go before we start seeing everyone in this room on the hillside each spring. Like that man, <laughs> a man can dream. So I've learned, you know, patience and, and, and the need to constantly move forward and 